Welcome to podcast number 10, and this will be the final podcast of chapter 7. And in this one, we're going to deal with the last section of the chapter that deals with the diversity of cellular life. We're first going to start off with multicellular organisms. Now, multicellular organisms are unique because every cell, it's not possible to have that cell do every single function that a living thing needs to do. This happens in unicellular organisms. For example, a bacterium or a paramecium or an amoeba, these single-celled or unicellular creatures must perform every function that is required for life within that one cell. Well, think of the human body, for example. Is it possible for a single cell to do every function that's going on inside a human body? For example, can a single cell become a heart cell, uh, a nerve cell, a skin cell, a stomach cell at once? No, that is not possible. So therefore, we have cells that become specialized. And as you can see here, specialized cells perform specific functions. And they only do this because they only use a portion of their DNA that deals with their function. For example, a skin cell will only use the portion of the entire human genome that deals with the skin cell function. Now, within the nucleus of a skin cell, there's going to be the instructions for brain cells, muscle cells, etc. But it's only going to read the skin cell portion of the genome. It's a very, very important concept. So, make sure that you guys get this stuff that's highlighted. Extremely important. If you understand this, you're going to understand how the diversity of cells within your body comes about. And there's actually about 210 different cell types inside the human body. All right. The levels of organization in a multicellular organism begin with the individual cell. The next step is called a tissue. This is similar cells working on a common function. The next step would be an organ. This is a collection of similar tissues that are working on a common function. And then finally, you have the organ system, where you have similar organs working on a common function. So, for example, um, you would have an individual cell that's in the digestive system. Uh, the digestive system basically has three different tissue layers. Um, uh, and then you put all three of these tissues together, you have a single organ. And you put all the organs, such as large intestine, small intestine, stomach together. That's your organ system. And then the fifth one, you put a bunch of organ systems together, you have an organism. For example, you. So you have individual cells in your body. Uh, many of them come together to form a certain tissue. Certain tissues will join together to form an organ. Certain organs will join together to form an organ system. And then all of your organism, or all of your organ systems make up you a single organism. All right, we got a picture here. And as we see right here, we're dealing with uh, the heart. This is an individual cardiac muscle cell. All right, cardiac referring to the heart. So remember that cardiac equals the heart. <laughs> Funny that it's green, all right? Okay, <clears throat> now, this individual cell joins up with a bunch of others and you're going to have heart muscle tissue. Now what's really neat about heart muscles, you see how it's, it differs from your skeletal muscle. It's branched. And you see these little lines right here? These are called intercalated discs. And these are important to have all of these cells communicate with each other. And this way they will beat in unison in that love dub, love dub, love dub of your heartbeat. All right, we put a bunch of these tissues together, and then we have your organ, in this case, would be the heart. Uh, left ventricle, right ventricle, I'm sorry, left atrium, right atrium, um, left ventricle, right ventricle. All right. And then you add in these blue veins, these red arteries, and then you'll have your cardiovascular system. Cardio referring to the heart. And then all these tubes that make up uh, arteries and veins, that is the vascular. Uh, vascular just refers to tubes. Okay, so uh, 
arteries would be a separate organ and veins would be a separate organ. You put those three together, there you have your cardiovascular system. So here you go. Cells, tissues, organ, organ system, and then of course um, the single organism because she's going to have a, a nervous system, um, she's got skin, uh, digestive system, etc., etc. All right. Once again, multicellular creatures have specialized cells. How do they become special? Just the way that uh, I said earlier. Uh, let's see. Let's change this one. They express only the genes required to do their function. All right. So, for example. We've got two different kinds of cells here. Here's a skin cell, it's a type of epithelium. Over here we have cardiac muscle. Remember those intercalated discs? Right here, you see those lines that come between them? And as you can see here, it's kind of branching. Right? These two cells, even though each nucleus contains the same amount of DNA, this skin cell reads different portions of the DNA. In other words, it will transcribe and translate different genes. It expresses different genes, and that gives it this special shape, and that allows it to do a special function. Uh, skin cells are kind of like the shingles on the roof of your house. They have a tendency to be flat, um, and they join up real close together so that water and other stuff doesn't, you know, in other words, your skin doesn't leak. Now, muscle cells on the, are totally different. They need to be able to contract, and they need to do it rhythmically uh, every second of your life. And imagine, since you guys were born in the 21st century, you'll probably live to be 100. For 100 days, it's got a beat, and the moment it stops, you're in trouble. All right, so as you can see here, it has read the genes that have made it branch. It's a bunch of long fibers. It's created these intercalated discs that will allow it to communicate with each other. So it's, it's, it has transcribed a totally different set of genes that allow it to become a heart cell and not a skin cell. All right? So even though we have 30,000 genes in the human genome, not every cell is going to read all 30,000. In fact, none of them read all 30,000 of them. They only pay attention to the genes that are related to their function. All right, that will conclude our podcast for Chapter 7, Cell Structure. Uh, make sure you review these uh, these 10 podcasts during this week. That way you will be prepared for the upcoming Celebration of Knowledge. Good luck.